In this video, we will see about biology behind tooth movement, especially in orthodontic treatment. There are three types of tooth movement basically, physiologic, pathologic and orthodontic. First, to run through the basics, physiologic tooth movement can be either pre-eruptive, eruptive or post-eruptive. As the name suggests, pre-eruptive is the phase which we deal with inside the jawbone it is mostly dependent on the growth of the jawbone and development of mandible as such as the tooth bud within the jawbone till it reaches the point of eruption that is when it is physically visible outside it is pre eruptive from when the cusps are visible to the occlusion stage it is eruptive phase not exactly occlusion because after the complete eruption of the crown still the tooth has to move mesially distally or occlusally to fit into occlusion it is post eruptive so the eruptive theories are basically bone remodeling root formation theory vascular pressure theory and pedial ligament traction theory these theories support the uh, eruptive mechanisms of which the pedial ligament traction theory is the most commonly accepted theory now it's time to know in detail about the orthodontic tooth movement there are many authors who research about the histological changes which occur in orthodontic tooth movement sandstead being the first to investigate in 1904 followed by oppenheim schwartz rayton Bomrand and Bucken Church are the other authors who did extensive research in the histological changes which occur during orthodontic tooth movement. We will see in this detail about what are the changes occurs and what are the basic concept which were propelled by these authors. They suggested that on application of force there are two zones which form area of pressure and area of tension. bone resorption happens at area of pressure and bone deposition happens at area of tension so how this resorption and deposition happens is what we see in detail in the following part of the video and as there is deposition and formation on opposite sides the socket moves along which the tooth moves the histological changes also vary depending on whether the force is mild or excessive so how does the tissue react to mild ortho force and how do the tissue tissue react to excessive ortho, ortho force when you consider any force let it be mild or excessive the tooth which is in its socket surrounded by the pedial ligament when subjected to an orthodontic force as already said faces an area of pressure and area of tension now surrounding the tooth root there is pedial followed by alveolar bone that is the bundle bone or lamina dura as we see it in the radiograph so following mild force how do the area of pressure react the pedial is obviously compressed in this side so the pedial compression leads to the blood vessels which are not occluded because of the mild force but they dilate the dilation is important here which results in the osteoclast recruitment they are macrophages macrophages which are differentiated under pressure and causes resorption of the alveolar bone adjacent to the pedial and this type of resorption is known as frontal resorption or direct resorption as it is adjacent to the periodontal ligament and there is no resorption of tooth root and no damage to the tooth as such so to summarize you should remember in area of pressure the pedial is compressed periodontal ligament is compressed which leads to blood vessel dilatation osteoclast recruitment and resorption of the bone known as frontal or direct resorption in area of pressure whereas the opposite side that is area of tension it is opposing to the direction of force therefore the pedial is stretched like a wire like it is stretched so the vascularity increased in the pedial stretched portion causing the osteoblast recruitment and fibroblast recruitment oppositely it is a formative reaction that is the osteoid layer is formed adjacent to the lamina dura and it eventually matures leading to bone formation so in area of tension there is bone formation and area of pressure that there is bone resorption so these are the changes which follows mild orthodontic force there is minimal or no lag period in this type of force 
there could be areas of hyalinization which what which is what we will see in the upcoming video but there is minimal lag or no lag in mild ortho force which favors orthodontic movement as you see in this diagram the bone resorption in one side and bone formation in one side leads to the socket movement and the tooth moves along with the socket in the upcoming video we will see about the changes following excessive force.